For today's sponsor we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is a video uh, that I'm making first due to a poll I made in the community tab that you voted for this video first. So I actually uh, asked you if you wanted first this video, uh, GPU comparison videos, how to install Windows video and so on and so on. And you chose this one of the how to optimize Windows for gaming or for the best you can get. Doesn't matter if it is for gaming or for anything else. It's basically just how to optimize Windows. Now, just understand that this video and these tips that I'm actually giving you, um, these tips aren't like magic. It, this is not a magic powder that somehow will make your computer perform super, super, really fast. It's basically just a deep load of Windows with some really interesting tips that you can have for and mostly for beginners, okay? So, if you are an advanced user, you can still watch the video because maybe there are some tips that you don't know about but this is mostly for beginners that don't know how to properly optimize their windows, okay? And well, before starting the tips, just let me tell you that you must do a system restore, well, you you must, it's not a must, but you should do a system restore uh, before going into these steps because if you're a beginner and you mess some things up, uh, you actually have the system restore so you can return back to your previous system, okay? So it's really simple to do. As you can see in the screen right now, properties, advanced settings and activate the system restore. Simple as it can be. So the first tip is to debloat Windows in terms of apps, processes, notifications, security and so on, so on, so on. And nothing best than show you that on the computer. So here we are now guys on the debloating part. It, this may seem uh, really hard, but it isn't easy. I'm just joking, it is easy. So right click on your desktop and go to settings. In this case it's display settings since it is Windows 11, but whatever. Let's go to the settings and now you have several options. This is on Windows 11, but the Windows 10 part is also pretty, uh, pretty easy and it looks like this more or less. The menus are different, but the names are more or less the same. So the first thing that I al always, always do is going here to the privacy and security, okay? Go to the privacy and security. Then you have, for example, several settings like, let's go here for the Windows permissions, general, okay? General. Put this to off, everything. Let apps show personalized ads by using, blah, blah, blah. Put everything to off in the privacy and security. Then go back to speech. The speech do the same off. If you don't use it, off. Um, microphone the same, just enable it for the software that you actually use. For example, I don't use Cortana, so disable for Cortana. Microsoft Photos, why do the photos need the microphone, okay? So you see what I, where, where I'm getting, Xbox app, Xbox game app, basically disable everything that you're not, you're not using the microphone into, okay? Once again, voice activation. Disable the voice activation if you're not using it. Um, and one important part is here, notifications. Disable the notifications as well. Basically disable everything, disable the contacts, calendar, uh, phone calls, call history, email tasks. Basically disable everything that you're not using and that you don't want, okay? It's mostly on privacy and security and disable everything that you don't use, even the file system, disable everything, okay? This is one of the most important steps, so just do it. The second tip is the startup programs. So basically when you install some, some programs, let's say for example some other programs, uh, your game launchers like Origin, Steam and so on, they actually tend to start in the beginning of Windows. So basically they will all start when you start up your Windows instead of just starting when you just want them to start. So yeah, basically they will start without you wanting them to. And that will slow your computer's booting process 
even more if you don't have an SSD and if you have, for example, an old HDD, that will slow it even more. And well, nowadays we actually have uh, that control on the Windows Task Manager. So just go to the Windows Task Manager using Control Alt Delete and then Task Manager or Control Shift Escape and you access directly the, the Windows Task Manager. Just do that and basically go there to the startup and disable all the programs that you don't need. I myself, for example, only let enable the antivirus. Everything else will just start when I want it to start and not in the booting of the system. Yeah. Well, the third tip is the boot services. Just go to your search bar, for example, on Windows 10, or if you're using older Windows, you can just select Windows plus R button and it will open the run button and then you press MS config. And well, after that, just go to the boot menu and you have several options. For example, if you open the advanced options on your current system, you have options like uh, the number of processors that you want to use, the max RAM you want to use, the, the only thing that you actually want to try here is to put the number of processors in the max so that Windows will actually use the max threads available to actually boot Windows. You also have other options like, for example, the no GUI, which is no graphic user interface in the boot, so you can actually boot faster without having that motherboard logo and so on, so on, so on, to improve a bit more your bootloader, okay? So if you want the maximum and the fastest possible boots you can get, go to no GUI, no graphics user interface, and you're good to go. Basically, what is the page file? The page file is a, um, let's say, kind of a partition. It's not a real partition, but it is a space that Windows actually uh, puts on the, the selected device, the selected hard drive or SSD that will be used once the system is out of RAM. So it will work as a, an exchange of data. Imagine if your game wants to use, for example, 10 gigabytes of RAM and you only have eight then um, the system will trade data with the disk in between disk and RAM as needed. So if your disk where the page file is, is actually slow, you'll have stutters due to that. And I'm saying this because an SSD is way faster than a normal HDD. So if you have the page file on the SSD, uh, the, um, the trading of data in between RAM and the SSD will be way faster, okay? Uh, and VRAM, of course. The trading will be way faster, let's just say that. While if you're having an HDD, the trader will be slower and can cause stuttering uh, and so on, so on, so on. So for example, if you have an HDD uh, and an SSD, go to advanced settings on the computer, just go to the system page file, I'm showing you the menus and how to access them now. Uh, just go there and select the page file as Windows wants to, but for your SSD instead of your HDD. Just make sure that it is in your SSD and not in your HDD. If you have one for both, for example, one for HDD and another for your, your SSD, just delete the one on your HDD and just let the one on your SSD do all the work, okay? You'll have writes and reads on your SSD, but today's SSDs are really, really prepared for that, so just don't worry at all. Basically put it on your SSD because if you have a, a system with a low amount of RAM, well, it will make a difference. Now, the fifth tip is to actually clean older Windows installations. So if you have updated or upgraded your Windows several times, Windows will let an older installation uh, of your previous system with a previous Windows version in the disk, in the hard drive, in order for you to do a um, backup if you want to. So if the update doesn't go well, you can just do a backup with those files. But if you are, for example, pretty fine with your current files, if your updated Windows is working perfectly and you just, and you just want to release a bit, more of, a bit more space on your main drive, on your Windows drive, then you can simply go to the search bar once again and write this cleanup utility. You just, you just need to write this cleanup and this will appear. Then you select the disk, 
you select that you want to remove those da the data, select the disk again, and after some time of searching, it will show you that it has the older Windows installation or something like that, and you just select that and then clean up. And bam, your Windows, your older Windows installations will be deleted and you'll simply have more space in your main hard drive. Also, if you go to the C drive, your main drive, and you go there, open it, and you have a, window, um, a Windows folder called windows.old. We do this with a system cleanup because you can't actually delete the system.old just by pressing that because uh, it has some kind of, of privileges that some users don't have. You need to, to be administrator and you need to do a lot of work in order to just go there and delete it. So it's way easier to use the system cleanup utility, okay? Basically, more space if you don't actually, uh, if you're not thinking at all of going back to your old version, okay? Now, for the sixth tip, we actually have the trim or the defrag option. So basically, the defragmentation is for the hard drives, for the HDDs and not the SSDs. Because when you have a disk, basically your HDD, it's basically like a vinyl. The HDD works the same way. So the, the only thing is that the HDD, when you, when you actually put a new information in your HDD, for example, you install a game, it won't install the game in this particular part. It will install the game here, a bit of it a bit of it there then there then there so when the, the the hard drive is actually accessing those files it will need to access one here a bit of that here then there then there then there so it isn't in the same spot it is in different parts and when you actually defrag it will grab all the parts of that data and put it in the same place so when you actually access it it will be faster to access because all the data is in the same place. Basically, you have fragmented parts of data and you will defragment them to put them in the same location, making the access faster, okay? This on the HDDs. For the SSDs, you have the trim function. I didn't search a lot into that, but what I know is that the trimming does make the access faster. So for the HDDs, you have the defragmentation option that will take quite a lot depending on how fragmented your, disc are, your disks are, sorry. But if you have an, a, an SSD, trimming is actually pretty fast and will take you only a few seconds. So go to the search bar once again, search for defrag, open it because Windows has an integrated app and do the trim for the SSDs and the defragmentation for the HDDs and you'll have way faster access times. As for the seventh tip, we actually have the clean HDD error. So if you have, for example, a Windows ins installation with some time and you actually didn't, didn't um, do a clean installation, you have it for some time, uh, you have updated several times, you may have HDD errors. And when I say you may have, you may actually have HDD errors. And if you're having, for example, blue screens, um, black screens, green screens problem and so on with your Windows installation, well, maybe instead of just doing an, a clean installation, which is really easy by the way, but if you don't want to do that, you can just go to the hard drive that you have your Windows installed in, just go to the properties, open the proper properties and go to the part where you have the check errors. It will check the errors and if you have, for example, errors in the Windows installation, in the, in the boot part and so on, so on, so on, Windows will fix all the errors possible. And this alone may fix your black screens, your blue screens and your green screens problem if they are related to the HDD or the Windows installation problems, okay? So this is a really easy tip, but for most people may solve many things. I myself solved some problems with that, so I didn't know I actually have uh, I actually had uh, disk errors. We had the power outbreak here, so the computers all shut down. And when I when I went the, um, into the Windows, I had some bugs. Then I go to the menu, I actually do a check for errors, and I had lots of errors in the Windows installation. Windows fixed them all, and bam, all working properly. Now, another tip is the partitions. So, for SSDs and for HDDs, but mostly for HDDs, what I advise you always is to not have 
uh, one partition only. For example, if you don't have an SSD and you only have, let's say, a one terabyte or two terabytes uh, HDD in your system, you will most likely just install Windows there and then the games in the same drive. But don't do that. Just when we're installing Windows, create two partitions. Okay, so you have, for example, if you have a two terabytes HDD only, just select one partition with, let's say, 256 gigabytes for Windows only, and then the remaining gigabytes for games, apps, and so on. And this for two particular reasons. The first one is that on HDDs, the access time takes longer. So if you actually make just a partition for the Windows, for the Windows part, it will take less time for the HDD to go there because the, the HDD would, would already know that Windows is just on this particular spot because you have a partition just for Windows, okay? I mean, the access times will be lower. And the second one is mostly because of data. Imagine that, that you have one partition only, okay? And you want to do a clean Windows installation. If you do a clean Windows installation, the Windows will actually format your HDD. And when that happens, all the data you have there will go yeah, basically all the data will disappear. But if you have the same hard drive, but two partitions, one for Windows and one for the data, you just need to actually clean that Windows partition and all the data you have in the, in the remaining parts of the disk will be there. So just do a clean installation on that particular partition and you're good to go, all your data will still be there. So yeah, that's a plus. Now, the ninth one is really for users that have really, really old computers and just want to feel the computer a bit snappier than before. So basically, just go to the properties, computer properties, advanced settings, and you have a menu where you can actually select the, um, well, all the effects that your windows do. I mean, when your windows, when you open a folder, you have a window, okay? So basically, all the, the things that it does, if it has shadows, if it has the, all the, those animations of minimizing and maximizing and so on, so on, so on, you can go and select the best performance mode because it will remove the animations and so on, or maybe even the shadows and so on. So basically, it will, it will feel snappier even more if you have a really old computer. So this won't be a thing for like 90% of users, but for those users that have really a really low-end computer, let's say that, well, this may help uh, in, f in making the computer feel a bit snappier. That and, of course, get an SSD for Windows. <laughs> yeah. Now, this one is all about the power mode, so Windows power modes. This is more related to the CPU process, okay? So basically the power modes uh, actually control how the CPU boosts and so on, how uh, it boosts and when it boosts and so on, so on, so on. If you, if you want to, to know the performance, the exact performance on some Ryzen um, processors, I actually have this video passing on the screen that you can actually watch, where I test those several modes to actually see if it makes a difference or not. But well, while in some systems it may not do anything, in others it will help a lot. And all you need to do is just go to your Windows search bar and go for control panel, open the control panel, go to the battery settings, something like that, the power, the power options, power slash battery options, and just go there and select high performance instead of the balanced. If you have a Ryzen 3000 series, for example, Zen 2 or 4000 series, you can select the AMD Ryzen high performance or the Windows high performance. Both will perform fine. But overall, just select anything that it isn't that isn't balanced or power saving, okay? Just go there and select the high performance. If you know what you're doing, if you're doing, for example, um, stepping overclock and so on, then you need the real you actually really need the balanced power plans. But for most people and for the best performance overall you can get in a normal situation, in a normal scenario, just go there and select high performance or AMD Ryzen high performance and you're good to go. The 11th one is the Windows Game Mode. As you know, Windows Game Mode um, has a really, really bad fame because, well, it doesn't do anything. Or at least it doesn't do almost anything. And some people, while not having any kind of performance games, will actually have problems. 
and by disabling the game mode you can actually make your windows problem free. The only downside of this is that if you haven't debloated your windows like I, show you, like I showed you in the first tip, you'll get notifications and you may get windows updates for example while gaming and if your internet is slow it may affect your gaming performance and so on and so on. But if you already debloated the windows like I showed you in the first step then you just go here and disable the Windows game mode because your notifications won't be there anyway. So yeah, they're disabled and you actually eliminate any type of problem that may surge from the Windows game mode, okay? Okay, now this is a really interesting one, which is the Windows Prefetcher. It is a thing that actually loads all the data on your HDD or some of the data that you may need. So basically if you open your Opera browser a lot of lot of, lot of <laughs> So basically if you open your Opera browser lots of times, what happens is that the Windows Prefetcher will actually load the data of the Opera or Chrome uh, before you actually use it. So when you actually open it for the first time. First time. <laughs> That's the joke. Uh, since that system boots, it will be faster, okay? This is great for people having good computers, but for people having older computers and only having an HDD, mostly and even mostly for laptops only having an HDD, this is crucial. To do that, just go to the Windows search and write services.msc. Then search for Windows Prefetcher or for, for something like Prefetcher only, but I think it's Windows Prefetcher search for it, open in the properties and disable it completely. So basically, like I said, this is mostly for people with older computers or people using only one HDD on the desktop or even more and most precisely for the laptop users only having an HDD, okay? Go there, disable the prefetcher and your hard drive will thank you a lot. <laughs> Now, the last tip is overclocking. I know that overclocking can be tricky and not everything overclocks the same like you see in all my videos, I always tell you that. Not everything overclocks the same, not everything can be overclocked, okay? But this is, this is just a way of actually getting more out of the hardware that you actually have. So if you have a CPU and you, you can actually get a bit more from overclocking it, do it. If you have a GPU and you can get a bit more from overclocking it, do it. This, in my opinion, in certain levels, okay? Because in some scenarios, it may happen that overclocking will degrade your chip. So when doing overclocking, you must know what to do. When you're overclocking RAM, you'll be fine. Most likely you won't degrade your RAM. When you're overclocking your GPU, you won't degrade your GPU also. But when overclocking your CPU, you must know what you're doing, at least in terms of voltages, because if you don't, you will degrade your CPU, even more if it is, for example, a Ryzen 2, 3000 series or 5000 series, okay? And this, of course, if you don't want to buy new parts, because in some scenarios, people just have, um, let's say, completely unbalanced systems. People will have a Ryzen 5 2600 or, for example, an i5-10400F or worse, or even worse, like, like an i3 with, for example, an RTX 2070 Super or even faster than that and to play at 1080p. So when you go for 1080p with a really fast GPU, what happens is that in terms of high FPS numbers, the CPU and RAM will be mandatory. So if you're playing, if you're playing a game at high FPS numbers, but your CPU uh, is that slow per se, you just won't do it. And that's not even the worst scenario because if you have enough cores, let's say if you have, for example, the Ryzen 5 2600, you, you have low IPC, but you have six cores and 12 threads. So having low IPC will make you have less FPS. But if you have, for example, a CPU with higher IPC, let's say the 6700, the 7700K, sorry, it has four cores, eight threads, but that's it. It has higher IPC, a bit higher IPC, but, but has only four cores and eight threads. What will happen is that if the game actually uses eight threads, you'll have stuttering. <laughs> Your GPU usage will be lower and you'll have stuttering because the game is actually asking 
because the game is actually asking for uh, more than four cores and eight threads, okay? And in most scenarios, they just wanted to play at 1080p and games that actually used a lot of cores and threads, like, for example, the Call of Duty, the Call of Duty Warzone that uses easily up to eight threads if your GPU is fast enough um, to actually handle those FPS, of course. So, the CPU will actually suffer all the time and will be at 80, 90 or 100%. And when it reaches close to 90 or 100%, it will stutter. So yeah, basically that's it. People have unbalanced systems and in order to avoid that, just search help and search a lot when building your computer to avoid this system unbalance. And well guys, that's all for today's video. Sorry for the long ass video, but I really needed to do this video this long because uh, there's a lot of things to explain and well, it is what it is. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section, let me know what you think about these tips that I gave you and the video uh, in its essence, basically. <laughs> and well, share it like I said, like, subscribe and yeah, see you in the next one.